God bless you, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Uh, 1 Corinthians is where we're going to be starting from. I want to say God bless you as you're turning in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Big happy birthday to uh, Matthew Walker. He's five years old today. We, uh, we appreciate Matthew. God bless you, Matthew. Uh, he told me this morning, it was actually his, we had his, uh, he had his party yesterday, but he was telling me that he had uh, leftover cake for breakfast. So we're really happy for you. <laughs> and uh, as you're turning into your Bible there, First Corinthians chapter 5, uh, Joshua will be speaking for us tonight. We're looking forward to that. God bless you, Joshua. We appreciate you as well. First Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 7 and 8, as you can see on the screen down there. And the word of the Lord says, <clears throat> Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Amen. Uh, still in 1 Corinthians, I'm going to be reading uh, from verse 14, and I just want to read verse 20 there. <clears throat> verse Corinthians, I just got it on the screen for you, chapter 14, verse 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be ye men. Amen. Also in Ephesians, I want to read, uh, got a few scriptures this morning. Might be a little bit lengthy. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31. It says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, clamor's crying, crying out, don't be a baby, you're crying out. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Amen. Put the clamor away. If you created a storm, don't cry about the rain. Praise the Lord. That's a, that's a really good one. Yeah, okay. Let all the bitterness and wrath and uh, anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and one one more found in saint john saint john uh chapter 12 yeah verse 9 something verse 9 saying john 12 it's uh jesus has raised lazarus from the dead and they've gone back to lazarus's house and lots of people have come to uh not just to see jesus but to see lazarus as well because uh, such a noticeable, um, a notable miracle had been performed, and there was Lazarus raised from the dead, and it didn't happen every day, so everybody wanted to have a look. But uh, it kind of was a frustration to the Pharisees and the Sadducees because, you know, <clears throat> if it doesn't happen in our group, mm, it shouldn't happen at all. That's the attitude that they, that they had. They were just full of malice. Uh, Saint John chapter twelve, verse nine. Much people, many, much, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Think about it, boys. He had been brought back from the dead once. He can be brought back from the dead the second time. But they were so, they were so eaten uh, that this hadn't happened in their ranks, uh, that this testimony really shouldn't be told. And uh, you should take it off the website. But the chief priests are consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death because that by reason of him and many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Amen. I want to speak. Uh, I'm feeling really good this morning. I want to speak uh, by the will of the Lord on the demon of malice. Malice. The demon of malice. Let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus. Father, we approach the throne of mercy. Father, we come boldly. We come under expectation. We come asking, oh God, that you come and speak to our hearts and change our minds and our attitudes, touch our lives, Father. Lord, uh, heal the sick and the afflicted uh, physically, but Father, the sick and the afflicted uh, mentally and spiritually, Father, heal us, oh God, for we know that this is the greatest healing campaign that ever did uh, hit the earth was the word of God, Father. We pray under this third Paul ministry of Malachi 4, this third Paul ministry, Lord, that uh, you would change us, Lord. Just make the changes that I need to touch lives this morning. Change attitudes, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So malice, 
obviously uh, will drive a man to murder, not only physical murder, but emotional murder. Uh, if you take your Bibles again, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Michael's going to, there it is on the screen. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Peter says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, not just most of it, all of it, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envyings and, uh, and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If you want to grow in the Lord, if you want to grow to the stature of a perfect man, you're going to have to get rid of the malice of demon. It's a demon, it's a spirit, it's a life of its own. Brother Bram called it the demon of malice. That's what we're speaking about this morning and I trust that you don't think about anybody else, think about yourself because that's why we come to church. Judgment starts in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So it might just be a little bit on the rough side this morning. And if we were at church, I would say you don't have to come to the altar. I'm feeling that the altar is going to come to you. Amen. Brother Ram said in the sermon, Humble Thyself, 1963, paragraph 94. He says, Now, surely, after all these years on the field and around the world and seeing different people, I ought to know a little bit about the gate to enter in at. If you want to get somewhere with God, and that's our attitude, that's what we want to do in our lives, we want to get somewhere with God. The prophet said, if you want to get somewhere with God, never let an arrogant spirit ever come around you. Don't let no malice come in. He says, no matter uh, what anyone does, it doesn't matter. Remember, laying aside all malice. No matter what anybody does, if, if they are wrong, don't you never build up a complex against that person, if they're wrong. See, you be sweet and kind. Remember, God loved you when you were in sin. And if the Spirit of God is in you, you love the person, you love the other person when he's in the wrong. See, just pray for them and love one another. <clears throat> he says, above everything, love God and love one another and be humble with God and around one another, and then God will bless you. He said, it's hard to tell. It's hard telling what he'll do. If you take the attitude, if you lay aside all malice, and you can just put away the hatred and remember the brotherly covenant. If you can do those things, it's hard to tell what God will do in your life and uh, how he will move. And I think, uh, I think we could uh, live a whole lot more in our privileges if we could deal with our own selves better. Future Home, 1964, paragraph 284. <laughs> the prophet says, like, like the man was when uh, he was still in hatred and malice and strife in him, when the fire baptism come, it cleansed it off. No more jealousy, no more nothing. It's just absolutely is a dwelling place for God. And remember, that's his delegation that's going to meet him over yonder. Amen. So we need to be built up to the stature of a perfect man. And never once did I notice, never once was malice uh, mentioned in any of the virtues to the stature of a perfect man. But uh, the scripture plainly tells us in First Peter to lay aside all malice, all malice. Most, not most of it, all of it. Amen. So we want to apply the balm of the Holy Ghost uh, this, uh, this morning to our lives and uh, Brother Bam said if uh, the oil of the Holy Ghost uh, is in the church, then all the gears, everything is going to run nice and smooth and it's going to be how it was meant to be. So it's what we would call in the, the mechanical trade, if you like, preventative maintenance. So let's make a preemptive strike, even if you are thinking that you don't need to hear this. I'm thinking you probably do because we're all born in sin shape and the Greek and the world speaking lies. So we're going to do some preventative maintenance uh, this morning. Now, malicious, the word malicious is from the word malice, malicious. Uh, that is why cancers are called malignant <clears throat> or a uh, malignancy. It's a tendency to do harm. Uh, remember the Pharisees were driven, they were driven, uh, malice drove them, they had murder in their hearts. Uh, um, it, it was a malicious, uh, uh, it's a malignant attitude to annoy or to pay back, you know, the payback, uh, malice, the payback. Uh, it's the tendency to produce death. 
And that's what the Pharisees had in their heart. Oh, I won't produce deaths because they were driven and eaten by this demon of malice. So if it doesn't happen in our group, it just simply shouldn't happen at all. If it doesn't happen in our church, it shouldn't happen at all. In fact, if it didn't happen in our church and it happened in another church, it was probably wrong. It's a demon of malice. Brother Brown said, <clears throat> sometimes we bury too many people that's still alive. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you still act the part of a churchgoer. Yeah, someone with a demon of malice, a Bible-packing message, a believer, and living a spiteful life. The prophet said, and sometimes we bury too many people that's alive, too much malice and strife, and there's too much of it in the church. In the church. But when the fiery baptism of the Holy Ghost comes, the prophet of God said in a future home, paragraph 284, it should burn it all away. If there's still something there, then there's something wrong still. Amen. It's a juvenile Christian traits, acting like children. <clears throat> like a two-year-old that wants something. You, you, you watch the, the, the little ones, the, they've got to have it even if somebody else wasn't playing for it, playing with it. As soon as they see someone's going to play with it, they go and snatch it because it's malice. It's born in sin. Shaped in iniquity, coming all speaking lies. It's a demon of malice. Brother Brown said, sometimes we bury too many people that's still alive. Uh, too much malice and strife and there's too much of it in the church. Mm, holding on to ill will. Ooh, it's going to get rough now. Holding on to ill will. Amen. It's not that there's. Uh, it's not that. Uh, it's not that there's uh, no water under the bridge. It's uh, the bridge is underwater. Uh, that's a. That's a. Uh, <coughs> copyright. I think it's copyright. Max Reed saying. I love it though. I trust I use it with permission by the Max. Amen. It's. Uh, uh, well, you, you, you can't get back to where you should be if the bridge has been washed away. And the demon of malice, the flood of ill will, washed the bridge away and there's no return because you say that person's name and this feeling comes up. You mention an event and a feeling comes up. It's a devil. Amen. It dissolves friendships, it dissolves relationships. And it brings a discord amongst the, the brethren. Amen. And they'll, they'll gossip about you until your reputation is dead and call it fellowship. Ill will. The demon of malice. Mean and nasty. A churchgoer, a Bible-packing, message-believing churchgoer, mean and nasty, full of ill will. Mm, mean and nasty. The prophet said, but I found out uh, in this uh, that evil spirit had got among them and had caused a hatred and malice over issues that had come up among them. Let me read it again. But I found out <coughs> in this that the devil, an evil spirit, had got among them and had caused hatred and malice over issues that had come up among them. Amen. Amen. A, uh, a vindictive, hateful nature is of the devil. You can't call yourself a Christian and be vindictive and hateful and full of malice. Amen. It, malice is the enjoyment of seeing somebody suffer. Because they said something to you or they said something about you or they did something around you that you didn't like and then you see them fall into misfortune and there's a certain satisfaction. Uh, it, it, I'm talking about the payback or the karma. The karma. Go karma. It's the ha ha ha. Mm. Not necessarily just the psychopathic. Just that little justification, just that feeling of justification that a payback has happened. It's of the devil. <clears throat> Colossians 3.8. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Colossians 3.8. It says, uh, but now, now, <clears throat> but now ye also put off all these. Now, not tomorrow, not another night with the frogs, like Pharaoh said. 
scary the frogs tomorrow. One more, give, give me one more night with the evil spirits. But now, Paul says in the, Col the Colossians, now this is Colossians, this is the Christ, this is the mystery of God revealed church. This is, this is the revelation church. This is the hardcore church. But now you also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. It was in the church. Out of your mouth. This is the church. This is the Colossians. This is not just anybody. This is not uh, the Corinthians. This is not a church of correction. This is a hardcore church. This is a word church. The message church. Amen. It says, but now you also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. In the sermon, uh, Perfection, 1956, the prophet says, uh, now you, you can sing like a lark. And still have hatred, malice, and strife in your body and your soul. You can shout like I don't know what and still have it. You can dance in the spirit. You can speak with tongues. You can prophesy. You can preach any of these things and still have malice, envy, and strife in your heart. Amen. Malice is the desire to do harm. Uh, it's, uh, it's to see that ill will happens, to be satisfied and feel that feeling of justification when you see uh, something happen to somebody. It's called ill will. Spite is a malicious bitterness. It's a hatred or the grudge. I want you to remember that word grudge. Remember grudge and remember ill will. Grudge. Amen. So you can be you can be malicious and bitter. You can be uh, full of hatred and grudge and still dance in the spirit, still sing like a lark, still speak with tongues, still prophesy, still preach, because something hasn't happened yet. The prophet says, and where there's all this malice and strife and wars and envy and malice against one another, brother, God just moves out. He said, that's all. God just moves out. He's not, sing like a lark if you want to. Preach, preach like a dynamo if you want to. Speak in tongues like a like a, like a, like a, like a, like a Tommy gun. But God's moved out. Malice, the demon of malice. <clears throat> and we're still left feeling religious, and we're still fe left feeling good, and we're still feeling justified, and we're full of devils. Amen. Amen. Might as well say amen. Might as well say amen at home. Say amen. <laughs> Brother Ben said, try. <laughs> I like it. Try. Try. He says, try to be good to one another. <laughs> try to be good to one another. Try to shake hands and be friendly and nice. He says, tear down all the walls of partition around you. He said, that's malice and difference and ungodly. Tear it down. Tear it down. Try to be nice. Try to shake hands. Try. <laughs> amen. But... Just think, uh, the challenge this morning is if someone's name is mentioned, what's the feeling now that goes with it? If an event is mentioned in history, something that happened in your history, your personal life, something that happened maybe years ago, what's the, what's the emotion that comes with that? Mm. Amen. <clears throat> Mention an event. Malice has got you feeling vengeful, hateful, angry. Talking about the grudge, the grudge, the grudge. But there's got to be a change in the nature. I mean, that's why we come to church. That's why we sit under the word. Nobody's pointing fingers at anybody because we're not thinking about anybody else but ourselves this morning. But there has to be a change in the nature if you want to take a rapture. In the deity of Jesus Christ, 1949, paragraph 98, the prophet says, uh, but that, that is the God, the creator living in you and giving you all the power and you're in possession of anything that he had. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Praise the Lord. Now what? For what? For what? Ask yourself, for what? Let me read it again. But that is, that, that is the God, the creator living in you and giving you all the power. And you're in possession of everything that he had. He said, so it's in you to uh, abstain from evil. That's why you want all the power. 
so you can actually shut your mouth, so you can shut your ears, so that you can change yourself. You can transform the prophecy, transform yourself. You've got all the power. The deity of Almighty God is living on the inside of you, and the reason is to abstain from evil, to take control over the Antichrist, to live above sin, and to be the representative that God wants you to be. But if you're driven by a demon of malice, it's checkup time. So it's in you to abstain from evil and to do good and to shun evil and flee to righteousness, to turn away from temptation. Yeah, yeah, if the deity is living on the inside of you, friend, then it's more, it's more than achievable to resist the devil. To turn away from temptation, all malice, hatred, strife, envy, and so forth, come away from it, for that'll take him from your heart. If you will receive him, embrace him, and love him, and hold him in your heart, and love him, he says, I tell you, the church together in that kind of a power has the power to bind the heavens, heal the sick, open the eyes of the blind, the dumb to speak, the deaf to hear, the cripples to walk, the blind to see. Why? He said, it's recognizing the power Almighty God is in your heart. There he is, the deity. The deity is in the bride of Jesus Christ. And the reason the deity is in the bride of Jesus Christ, that's what gives you the power to live above sin. Amen. Amen. You're not a programmed uh, unit like I was trying to explain, and I, I didn't do such a good job of it on, on Wednesday, but you are not, you just simply, you are not a predetermined biological process. Uh, you are not, or oh, your vocal cords, your mouth is not a predetermined, uh, a, a predetermined biological process whereby wind just passes over your vocal cords and you make some sort of a noise that you didn't know you were going to, it came from your own thinking. You said it because you thought it. So if you say it, then I know what you're thinking. If I don't know what's on the inside until you let the inside out. And the inside comes out simply by free will. But the power, the deity of all the Almighty God, the baptism of the Holy, the fire of God is in our hearts to allow us by our own free will to overcome the temptation. And how often do we let it slip? It's called free will. God's foreknowledge of our free will. That's why we are predestinated, by his foreknowledge. Anyways, so we have the ability under free will. Uh, we have the ability under free will and the deity to abstain from sin, to abstain from malice, and to take control of this devil called malice. Amen. So sin, sin we, we, we know the story, sin separated us from our ought-to-be condition, but the Holy Ghost put us back. Amen. Adam sold us out, but Jesus brought us back. Amen. But the Holy Ghost will not live in a hateful house. Amen. A house governed by malice. Have a look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel 43, 10. We have used it many times. Ezekiel 43, 10 says, Thou son of man, show the house to the house. Show the house to the house of Israel. Show the pattern. Show, show the rhythm. Show the blueprint. Show the reality. Show the house to the house. Show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. Amen. The pattern is Jesus Christ. Let us measure up to the pattern of Jesus Christ. God gave us this ministry in, uh, in this generation in the Malachi 4 to show us the pattern, to show us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's the same Jesus in the bright form, and where he, where he overcame, we can overcome. Amen? Because it's His Spirit living in us. That's what gives us the power to take control of this thing called malice. <clears throat> After the resurrection, when Jesus came back from the dead, he never did go back to Caiaphas. Joseph, when he came to his position in Egypt, he never went to Potiphar's house. It was never the payback. It was never uh, that they were not driven uh, by this spiteful and malicious murdering spirit uh, to go for the ha-ha factor, the payback. They were busy about the father's business. Amen. Measure up to the fullness of the stature of a perfect man. Measure up to the pattern of the house. Measure up to Jesus Christ. Measure up to the word of God. Amen. The deity form. Brother Brown said the demon of malice. The demon of uh, enmity and malice. 
a canker of soul, a uh, canker a man's soul and take him to a devil's hell. You don't have to go to a sinner's grave in a devil's hell, friend. You've been given the ability by the baptism of the Holy Ghost to take control of the situation. Praise the Lord. It's hold, remember, it's holiness or hell. No holiness, no heaven. Amen. It's an interesting thing, Brother Ben, he tells us that the, the maniac in Gadaria, yeah, I remember the, he was a lunatic, he was just completely, yeah, well, he, he, was a, uh, he was just gone, he was, he, the devil had driven him into the tombs and he was completely out of his mind, the man, he was a maniac, and the reason he was a maniac, Brother Ben, said, because the spirit of malice had got him, and driven him to the tombs, the prophet said he was possessed with malice. It'll drive you. Malice will drive you. The demon of malice will drive you. Still feeling religious, still feeling good. Just that satisfaction about something happened to somebody who said something about you. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ conquered that at Calvary. Jesus Christ, the mighty conqueror. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He conquered every devil. He put under his foot the devil. Amen. Jesus Christ, don't let that thing deceive you and think that it has a right to live in your heart. Your heart was not made for devils. Your heart was made for deity. Amen. He conquered sickness. He conquered superstition. He conquered pride. He conquered lust that day at Calvary. He conquered malice. He, he, uh, he conquered hatred. He conquered indifference. He conquered selfishness. He conquered prejudice. He conquered religion. The mighty conqueror. And by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with that spirit living on the inside of us, we are more than a match by his spirit to overcome this demon of malice. Amen. Evict those things. They're living in your head. Devils living in your head, red and free. Evict those things. Amen. Reject them. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Amen. You can live better without it. You'll feel better without it. Mm. Amen. It's the fruit of the enemy. It's not the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Malice. Gifts, miracles, ministries will never amount to anything while we harbor the spirit of malice, the demon. Amen. So pray for one another, love one another, say nice things about one another. Amen. That's how you get rid of devils. Just be nice. Try to be nice. Try to shake hands with everybody. Try to overcome yourself. Amen. You can do it by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Titus chapter 3, Titus 3, 3, praise the Lord. <clears throat> For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. And then Jesus came, living in malice. You were born in that thing. A total deliverance, 1959, paragraph 94. The prophet says, uh, had some kind of a little experience of jumping. <laughs> he had some kind of a little experience in jumping and shouting and speaking in tongues or something or another and still have malice in your heart, strange acts, telling lies, smoking cigarettes, lusting after women. Something hasn't happened yet. The prophet said there's something hasn't happened yet. Ezekiel, let's turn in the Bibles, Ezekiel 25, I'm going to give you time to, I want, I'd like you just to uh, look at these things. Ezekiel uh, 25, I'm going to read verses 1 to 7. <clears throat> Ezekiel 25, 1 to 7. Against them. And say unto the Amorites, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, because thou sayest, aha, because thou sayest, aha, against my sanctuary, ah, the karma, the karma, the payback, aha, because thou sayest, aha, against my sanctuary when it was profaned, and against the land of Israel when it was uh, desolate, and against the house of Judah when they went into captivity. They were standing on the side of the bank there looking at everything going into Babylon and they were saying, Ha ha! Serves you right. Behold therefore I will deliver thee 
to the men of the east for a possession, and they shall set their palaces in thee, and make their dwelling places in thee, and they shall eat thy fruit, and they shall drink thy milk, and I will make Reba a, a stable for camels, and and the Ammonites a couching place for the flocks, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God, Because thou hast clapped thine hands and stamped thy feet and rejoiced in heart with all thy despite against the land of Israel, behold, therefore I will stretch out my hand upon thee and will deliver thee from the spoil of the heathen, and I will cut thee off from the people, and I will cause thee to perish out of the countries, and I will destroy thee, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. The Amorites were rejoicing over Israel being taken captive, for they had been better to mind their own business. And they went, aha! And God heard it. God saw it. He said, you clap your hands and you stamp your feet and you're full of spite. He said, thus saith the Lord. Amen. They were chastened of the Lord now. They rejoiced in heart. With all their despite, it was an ill will, like clapping their hands, and they, they, they were just having a barn dance. They were, having, they, they were just rejoicing over seeing somebody falling apart and being taken into captivity. Maybe somebody said something about you, and two years later they got ill, and you rejoiced. You, just that little feeling of satisfaction, but God's watching. Karma. Karma. You say, go karma. Mm. Amen. Malice is a devil that will drive you to look for vengeance. You'll never heal yourself by wounding somebody else. Never. Just make you feel good. And why did you feel good? Because you were satisfying a devil on the inside. The payback was sweet. Why? The devil was rejoicing. Hmm. How do you pronounce karma? Ha, ha, ha. That's how you pronounce karma. But you're never going to do yourself any good by doing somebody else harm. Amen. <clears throat> Ezekiel 25, uh, verse 15, 16, and 17. Ezekiel 25 on the screen there. Yeah, 15 to 17. Uh, thus saith the Lord God, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred. Mm. Doesn't sound like the statue of the perfect man. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will stretch out my hand upon the Philistines and I will cut off the Chermathites and destroy the remnant of the sea coast and I will execute great vengeance upon them with a furious rebukes and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. Amen. The Philistines would have been better just to mind their own business and start praying for Israel. Everybody should be praying for Israel. Okay, something happened to Israel. Israel had backslidden. Israel had done the wrong thing. And now uh, the judgment of God was upon them. But instead of praying for them, instead of trying to be uh, remembering the brotherly covenant, uh, they were so full of, a, they had such a despiteful heart and so full of malice that they stood on the bank and they clapped their hands and they stamped their feet and they were rejoicing. And God said, you're next. Aha, you sucker. Go karma. Amen. So God executed a great vengeance upon them with a furious rebuke. A vengeance, anger, malice shouldn't be in a heart that was created for God. Hmm. Oh, how can you say you love God and hate me? <clears throat> Israel was God's elect. Israel was his chosen people, and he was jealous over them. And when the elect are chastened of the Lord, and we begin to say, Aha, Saka, <laughs> you're next. Amen. The chastisement that was, that was upon them from the Lord, the chastisement that was upon them had nothing to do with you, but now you brought yourself into it simply with the attitude of, aha, about time. 
Amen. It may not necessarily be that it is divine judgment from God because of something that they said to you. It might just be character building or child chastisement from the Lord dealing with them as an individual, not because of something that happened between you and them three years ago. It just proves you have issues. God bless you, love you. I love you. But we're in the house of the Lord. Judgment starts at the house of the Lord. I want to be rapture ready. I want you to be rapture ready. Don't go thinking about nobody else. Think about yourself uh, this morning. Amen. Uh, Ezekiel 26. Ezekiel 26. I'm going to read the first six verses. Yeah. <clears throat> and it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, because that Tyrus has said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken, aha, she is broken, that was the gates of the people, she is turned unto me, I shall replenish, now she is laid waste. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus, and I will cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causes his waves to come up, and they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus, and break down her towers, and I will also scrape her dust from her, and make her like the top of the rocks. I shall be a, It shall be a place for the spreading of the nets in the midst of the sea, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God, and it shall become a spoil to the nations. And her daughters which are in the field shall be slain by the sword, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. Tyrus would have been better to be praying for Israel. Amen. Tyrus, he'd seen that uh, Jerusalem was broken and he said within his heart, Aha! About time. Better. Better. It's better to mind your own business. It's been better to be praying and even to be fasting for those that don't like you. So God said, hey, I, I heard it, and now I'm pouring out judgment on you. You are next. Amen. Their, their malice, it caused them to rejoice over Israel's judgment, and they were satisfying a devil by rejoicing at somebody else's misfortune. Amen. Amen. So they were broken, and they were destroyed, Simply because of their own malice. Sometimes we choose our own chastisement. Yeah, that's a good one. Sometimes we choose our own chastisement because we were we were we were foolish enough not to mind our own business. So somebody somebody wronged you. Someone said something about you two years ago, seven months, uh, fifteen days, and twenty-two hours. Not that you are counting, or not that you care, or not that you want to really remember. But something happened to them. They said something about you two years ago, seven months. 23 days and 10 hours ago, and now after two years and seven months uh, and 23 days and seven hours or whatever it was, uh, their engine and their car blows up and you are satisfied. It's the judgment of God because they said something against me. You're next. Love you. Amen. Don't say, aha. Mind your own business. Get to praying. Amos. Amos 1.9. Uh, Amos 1.9. Um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amos 1.9. Thus saith the Lord, for through transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and remembered not the brotherly covenant. Tyrus, you're next, because you stood on the side of the bank and you were clapping your hands and stomping your feet and you were saying, aha, you're next. Mm. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36, 1 to 5. Also thou son of man prophesy unto the mountains of Israel and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, Aha, 
even the, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are uh, infamy of, uh, of the people. The word infamy there means uh, they, they've feigned you, they've gossiped about you, they've talked about you, they've whispered about you, they've said things about you behind your back. You are taken up uh, in the lips of talkers uh, and are uh, in inf infamy of the people. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills and to the rivers, to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken because... Uh, which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are around about. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all in Dharma, which is the descendants of Esau, which have appointed my land into their possession, uh, with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. And the Lord said, because you did that, you're next. Even your enemy will be judged for pointing the finger at you. When you talk about misfortune and you Start to defame somebody. Mm, careful. You might fight. You might face the jealousy of God. Paybacks and getting even uh, are held as joy in their vengeful hearts and their spiteful minds. It's about satisfying the devil. It is devil worship. Amen. Looking forward to the day where you can get a payback. Oh, it's in the church. By the way, it's in the church. Obadiah. Let's read Obadiah. Obadiah. I think Obadiah's only got one chapter. Uh, one chapter. Obadiah. Uh, I want to read verses 11 and 12. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive by forces, and the foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he had become a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. In other words, mind your own business. If God is dealing with one of the brethren in the church or another fellowship or whatever it is, if God is dealing with somebody, it doesn't necessarily mean it's divine judgment on them because something they said to you 10 years ago. Amen. You must say amen. Say amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Rejoicing over someone else's distress just because they disagreed with you is for devils. Brother Brown said in the sermon to see Jesus, 1954, paragraph 17. And so that's the way it is tonight. Those who desire to see God must come up with a perfect heart with all strange feelings set aside, with all malice towards their neighbours set aside, with all malice towards other churches and other individuals and forms of worship, you must come with a perfect heart. Amen. I'm not seriously, I'm seriously not interested in anybody's uh, being satisfied about somebody else's misfortune. I do not, cons I do not consider myself to be that important. Uh, but what I want to do is make sure that I have a clean heart and that I am a, a dwelling place for the Holy Ghost. I want to make sure that all malice has been washed out. That's what your attitude should be. That's what my attitude is. You can have all sorts of experiences, all that you like, but if there is a satisfaction or a justification in seeing somebody suffer, you know something's wrong somewhere. You're not that important. 
a sign of spiritual maturity is that when someone offends you, you can pray for them. When somebody offends you, because offense must come, but it's not about them, it's about you. It's not about the issue, it's about you. It's not about revenge, it's about you. It's a how do you deal with the situation when you see something happen to somebody that you don't even like, or someone said something about you and it caused something to happen, and now you have the satisfaction in your heart seeing something uh, take place in their life. It's a devil. There's something on the inside feasting and rejoicing on someone else's misfortune, but a sign of Christian maturity is that you simply can try to understand their situation instead of swimming in the pond of maliciousness. <clears throat> it's hard, I know, it's hard. It's hard, to, uh, it's hard to swallow when you're choking on your pride. I'll copyright that, okay? but you can use it with permission. It's hard to swallow. And it's a, this, is a, this is a grassroots sermon. This is a pastoral sermon. This is, this is good for every one of us. Uh, but sometimes it's just hard to swallow uh, if you're choking on your pride. And if your pride is holding you back and you've got another issue, there's another sermon for you coming. Pride is of the devil. Mm. Praise the Lord. To so the chief priests in our, one of our opening scriptures, the chief priests they hated Lazarus. They just hated the fact that Lazarus had been brought from the dead, brought back from the dead. They hated the fact that there would be such a supernatural something happen in somebody else's church and not theirs. They were driven with this hatred, this demon of, of, of malice, and they were, had murder on their mind now. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Quite frankly, they would prefer to see him dead, stay dead. They would prefer that that church just close it down. <laughs> I leave it alone. I think I'll leave, I think I'm going to leave it alone. I think so. Maybe not. <laughs> if a revival was to break out in uh, another church in the area, the only thing that would disappoint me is that I wasn't there to be a partaker of it. But I wouldn't think, oh, that's a shame, because it didn't happen in our church. I would just want whatever they got, bring it over here now. Mm, I'll, okay, I'll stay, I'll leave it alone. <clears throat> but it's malice, it's a devil, it's a demon wanting to be worshipped. Amen, amen. They hate the supernatural. These Pharisees, they hated the supernatural taking place simply because they couldn't do it. They were just being showed up. Amen, amen. I'm trying to skip off. <laughs> Malice drove him. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So because of uh, Lazarus's resurrection, many people believe the message. They, they kind of enjoyed the ministry, the resurrection ministry, and they had left the Pharisees group and they had come to this group that was uh, preaching the word and now they were full of hatred and uh, uh, the chief priests were just full of spite and they just couldn't rise above that feeling and they were just left with a murdering thought. So bound in hatred and, and in malice, uh, driven to murder. La last quotation, uh, Absolute 1963, paragraph 307. The prophet said, Until then, I'm going to live true to that word, so help me, God. Because that's my absolute, with malice towards none, with love and grace towards all. If that isn't right, God could strike me dead standing right here in this pulpit. I have malice against nobody. I love everybody. Just think what would happen in the church of the living God if everybody could come to church clean, carrying no devils. You're going to, give it, you're going to have to give it an account one day, the prophet said, for every devil that you allow to take a residence in your soul, in your heart, in your, in your mind, in your spirit. You're going to have to give it an account. So let's just purge it out this side of the veil. Amen. Let's be a people that are ready. If the church, if there was no malice or hatred or any of those things, Brother Ruth said, it's hard telling what could happen. It'd be such an outpouring of the Holy Ghost where God absolutely, all the fruits are open, everything, everything is prepared and the people are no longer harboring uh, that, that despiteful, nasty demon called malice. Amen. We want to be rapture ready. So this is not about them, friends, as I close. As I close. 
this is not about them. This is about you. This is about your reaction to an action. Amen. Because blessed are the merciful. They shall receive mercy. Amen. <clears throat> it's strange that a spirit, the prophet tells us, a spirit jumped on them because of something that had happened. A spirit can jump on you because of an action. A spirit can jump on you because of what they did. And now you're serving time for a crime that they did. So it's just seriously not about them. It's not about the issue. It's about your response. There's a demon of malice. Let's not, let's not feed that thing. Let's cast it out. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Bow our heads and close our eyes. Just think about your own life, think about your own attitude with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Just think about if somebody's name is mentioned, what's, what's the, well, what is the reaction that's so fast before you could take control of it? What's the, what's the reaction? When someone's name is mentioned, when a situation is re-mentioned, what's your attitude? Amen. I want to be rapture ready. I want you to be rapture ready. I don't want to be harboring uh, despite. What's the feeling when you know that something happened to somebody that you really didn't like? Though you should, you should love your worst enemy. Let me talk to honest people. With our heads bowed. Our eyes closed. Let me let me talk to somebody who's honest. You won't be rapture ready with that thing. Why don't you just come clean? It's check up time. It's a reality reality check. Just come clean. Say, Oh God, flush this thing from me, Lord. You've been given the deity, you've been given the power to resist the devil and to live above sin. To say, Lord, uh, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna fast until I'm right. Lord, I want to be rapture ready. I'm, we're so close to the end now, friend. Why don't you take the time this afternoon just to get into the presence of the Lord and talk it over with Jesus. Say, Lord, I don't want a vengeful heart. I don't want to be carrying a spirit of malice. But my heart was created and my mind and my soul was created. I was created to harbor love. Why don't you do that this afternoon, friend, as we pray. Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the message. We thank you for instruction. We thank you for counsel of the Holy Ghost. And I pray, Father, that uh, as we have been sitting under the word for just a short while, Father, that many examples in your Bible and in the word that we could have taken out, but... Lord, uh, it's just obvious that uh, this emotional response to something is just not the Holy Ghost. So I pray you have mercy upon us, Lord. I bless your sons and your daughters. Oh God, purge us, Father. Purge out the old leaven, the malice and the hatred. Pur purge it out, Father. We want to resist the devil and live a life worthy of this gospel. Bless your people, Father. And I pray for Brother Joshua as he makes preparation for this evening. Lord, that you would anoint him like never before. Speak to our hearts like never before. May we come and listen to the word that is preached this evening uh, without this thing in our hearts. Father, we love you. Hard to tell what you will do, Father, if we come clean. Lord, may we be brave enough and honest enough to be real. Help us, Father. Bless your people. Purge us, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless your hearts, friends. I love you. I appreciate you. A uh, little bit of a hard sermon, but you'll be okay. Just have a good lunch. Talk about it. Consider it. Pray about it. And get alone with the Lord uh, this afternoon and talk it over with Jesus. Amen. I want to be rapture ready. The dead in Christ are about to rise. And let's be a people that are found ready. Amen. God bless your hearts. Shalom. <laughs>